Hi everyone, it's Nat here. Hope you're all doing well. So I've got a busy weekend coming up. I have to do a lot of challenges and that. Um, and I've been doing a bit of autumn crafting, so I want to continue on with that. So I have a plan today to use gelatos. I haven't, I've used, I've had gelatos for probably over a year or something. And I've only used them for one thing, which is a bit sad. I'm quite embarrassed to say that. So this is the year to get using some of my stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try, I'm not sure how it's going to work, on some book page, just because I have so many, as usual. And I thought that it might be best to prep it first with some gesso. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cover these two pages with some gesso. So these are just books that I have gutted, taken the insides out to use the covers for journals. And so I keep some of the insides to do this sort of thing with. So I believe that uh, the gesso gives the gelato something to grip onto, but also hopefully help me um, blend them and smudge them, which I have not done before. Well, I have used them when I've done Franken papers or collages before and just drawn with them around the joins of my papers and then smudged that with my finger, which I really like the effect, but I haven't done anything like this yet, so. Now, I don't mind if the um, text shows through a bit, but I'll still give it a good coat, I think. All right, so I think they're done enough. So I'm going to go let them dry and I'll be back shortly. So I have my gelatos here. I don't have a great selection. Um, I couldn't really find the colors that I wanted, but I found some that I think might do. So I have this selection here, browns and greens and a red. I would have liked some more orangey sort of tones and different brown shades, but that'll do. It's an excuse for me to buy some more sometime. So what I am going to do is my gesso is nice and dry on this page. So I'm going to put a base layer down. So what I'm going to do is just randomly scribble with some of these. As I said, I haven't really done this before, so I'm not expecting it to be <laughs> perfect. Now, I want a top colour, I might keep this pistachio as a top colour. We'll see how we go. Got some darker green here. It's a bit like using crayons, this stuff. And then we've got our brown. some of the other colors a bit as well all right now I know sometimes you can just use your finger and the moisture on your finger will blend it but I also see people um, just spraying a bit of water onto packaging and wetting their finger a bit or wetting some I've got I think it's anti-static cloth I'm not sure how this is going to go but I might use this as well I just want to cut a little bit off because I think it'll be easier for me to manage it's in the shape of a hand. It's one of those cleaning ones, so cut the thumb off. <laughs> so I'll get a bit of water on my packaging here. I might try this. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, that's sort of working. I think a thicker coat of gesso probably would help a bit on this book page, but it's still blending a bit. What I might do is... Wet that a bit too. Yeah, that's moving a bit better now. Let's 
sort of ripping up the page. The book page probably isn't the best thing to do this with. But I will persevere. I've seen people do it with cardstock because they've going, uh, they were going to make cards with it. It's a bit better. Be a bit more light fingered with it. I'll just spray when I need it. It takes a bit of practice, I suppose, to get used to how to use these things. But I just want to blend and mix these colours together a bit. I thought they were somewhat autumnal colouring. I think I'll be a lot smoother on your cardstock, but I'm quite happy with that. I'm just going to wipe away these bits where I've sort of brushed some of the book page off. Jessa or whatever it is. So what I'm going to do is let that one dry now before I do the other coat on it. Now have a look at this one. This one was still a bit tacky. I think it's dry enough to work with. I might use this one. And I think I'm just going to blend this over the whole lot. I reckon this one will work out a bit better because the um, gesso is a bit thicker and the page is a bit not as old, I think. So I'll grab the other side of this. just a few little red squiggles here and there that I can just blend in to add a bit of different colour. I'm just going to wet that on my packaging. I don't mind that so I will let that dry as well. I know it can take quite a while to dry the gelatos. This is the first one we did. Just thinking whether I put a coating of matte medium down and then go over the top of that with this might be better because then that will seal this. Okay so I have some range of matte medium here that I'm going to put over the top just to seal that base layer. Hopefully this works. I've got a fair whack there, so I might be able to do. Now, of course, I've got to be careful with this because the matte medium is sort of wettish and the gelatos react to the wetness. let them dry and then I will be back. So I've let all the matte medium dry now so it's time to do the next coat. So I think for this one I wanted to use my pistachio. I don't know if this is going to look any good or not but we'll give it a go. So I'm going to go over what I've done completely over it with this pistachio. I'm still getting used to um, using this. I'm not sure how much you're meant to put on. <laughs> so we will see. That should do. I'm gonna try with my finger this time. That's working quite well. OK, 
Okay, now I have a stencil here. This is the Cardabella 6x6 stencil, Fall Break. Uh, I think it's Falling Autumn Leaves stencil it is. So I want to try the resist technique with this. I might use, try my wet wipe. So I'm just going to put this on top. And I'm just going to wipe with this. Oh yeah, it's lifting a bit of it. I need to wet it a bit more. These are really little. Um, the stencil's really little and intricate, sort of, so it's going to be a little difficult. But I think we're getting it there. I think this is what they call the resist technique. So the idea is just take some of the green off so we get it back to the colour underneath. And that's why I put the matte medium down so we didn't remove all of the colour. But I think if you rub too much, you probably will. So I must go steady. And try, try this a bit too. Try and figure out which works best for me. Let's have another look there. Yeah, you can see it uh, working really lightly. You can have to play around with the colours a bit more and get some different colours. And... There we go, so it's a really light effect there. Now what I think I might do, because I like that, but it could do with some more contrast and that, so I was going to do this on the other page, but I think I'll do it on this one because I think it'll work out nicely. I might use this as a stencil with my darker brown gelato and just go around the stencil around the edges a bit and see how that turns out. I haven't done any of this before, so we will see. So if I put it about like that, and we'll just scribble some of this in there. I just want it around the edges, sort of. Now it's not really getting where it needs to yet, but I'm hoping we can rectify that with the next step. Might as well go all the way over there. So now yeah, I'll grab this back bit more water down and we're just going to rub it around the area of the stencil and try to get it in there a bit. It's working a little bit. Because it mainly just come off on the plastic edges of the stencil. So by doing this in a circular motion, it's taken off the edges and rubbing it into the bits that we want, hopefully. Just get some more over this way. There we go, so I've got some light stenciling there. So I quite like that effect. It's quite dark and thick on the edges where it has collected, but I quite like that. Looks like crispy bits of autumn leaves. So what I might do is go down the bottom a bit now. I thought it would come out um, more solid and darker, but I really like this light effect. I mean, you can layer and go darker and that, no doubt, but I'm really liking um, 
the lightness of this and the fact that it's on the book page. I like seeing that book page come through as well. So I think that's really cool. Now, I'm not sure about writing over um, the gelato. Um, it might be worth me doing another coat of matte medium afterwards to seal this and then I'll be able to write over the top of it and so this can be used as a writing spot or a page in a journal or for a tag or something. So, and it hasn't come through any of that, so that's great. That's worked out all right. So I really love the way that's turned out. So now we've got to find something to do with the other page. One thing we have to do is clean off the stencil. So what I might do is grab my wet wipe. Don't know if it's gonna leave an imprint or not, but we're gonna clean off our stencil. I'm gonna have to put this in some soapy water to get it off of those edges, I think. doing anything. Not much, I don't think. A little bit, but so I'll give that a good clean afterwards. So what colours do we have? What we could do is stencil it in a few of our different colours, I reckon, for this one. So I might go over the whole page too. So I'm just going to do some colouring in here and there. Oh, let's see what a mess we can make with this. A lot of these colours sort of blended together. Let's have a look. Oh, that's different. Get a bit of the red. Kind of like it. So I might do the same down here. All right, so I've got some really thick, chunky bits there. And that's on the older page and it hasn't gone through either. Oh, it has a little bit up the top there, but that's all right. So I quite like that, but I definitely love this one a lot more. So that was a bit of fun. I think it's hard getting a crisp shape through the stencil because it's quite little, but I love the look of that. It's beautiful. I decided while I have the gelatos out that I might just colour some pages for another project that I want to do. So I'm not going to bother putting gesso on these ones. I'm going to see how it goes just rubbing it into this page. So I'm just debating whether I should use this darker one or I'll try this one but if I have too much trouble I'll try the newer book because it's a bit smoother. We will give it a go. So I might start with red and green and a bit of brown, I reckon. So I'm just going to put it randomly around the place. It doesn't blend as well f for sure as it would if you had the gesso in the back. But I still really like that powdery effect that it gives. So I'm just gonna take that one off and let it dry. Then I might do some with this. Now, 
can't get it into those bits or I haven't got any, but I can always add some there afterwards since it's not really moving very much. take that one off. I definitely like that one better than that one. That one's too, the squares are too prominent, I think. But it still might be right for what I want to do. I might try one more with the darker colours. So yeah, it definitely works better on the book pages if you put your gesso down first. But that's all right, still a good way to colour them a bit. So I'm going to go and let them all dry. And then I might come back and show you what I plan to do with them. I have finished doing what I wanted to do with my gelatos. So we made these two pages. I really love this one. I don't mind this one. Uh, they make beautiful tag backings. This one I sort of left blank in the middle because I thought it would be a nice journal page even. Probably will go over them with matte medium just so I can write on it a bit easier if I want to. Uh, the thicker parts where I've got the coagulated gelato still haven't dried completely so they can still smudge so that might help with them as well. But that stencil is the same one that I used in my seasonal collage journal for this page. I absolutely love this page. It was just a plain white page and the stencil, I used inks and different coloured inks and I absolutely love the way that turned out. So, so I've got those and then what I did was die cut. So I die cut using these Kaiser Craft Autumn Leaf dies. They're really, really cool. And I die cut them out of the other pages you saw me do, the ones that I didn't gesso. So they didn't blend very well, which was all right. Um, I wasn't sure how they were gonna turn out, but I absolutely love the colors in these. So these are all the little leaves that I was able to cut out of those three pages, stacks of leaves. I might ink around the edges. I might ink around one or two and just see how it looks. Um, otherwise, um, just love how they have turned out. Really cool. So I suppose when you pick up autumn leaves, they're not all just the one colour. They do have a mix of different colours and I think this has um, highlighted that well. So I've got these little ones. These ones. So heaps of them here. A lot of them are still stuck together. So I think they'll look really cool on a page and even if this was a page, some of those drawn around the edges would look really, really cool. So I hope you enjoyed that guys. Give it a go. It was great to be able to use some book pages to make these leaves. I think I should make a whole lot more of those because they were great fun. So take care and I will see you soon. Bye.